Today we will be talking on treatment of MDR tuberculosis, which is called multi-drug resistance tuberculosis. So, what is the definition of MDR TB? It means that you have resistance to both isoniazid and rifampin. Okay. Even if uh, there is rifampin monoresistance, we treat uh, the patient like uh, MDR tuberculosis. Although the definition says that it is rifampin monoresistance, but the treatment of uh, even rifampin monoresistance is the same as MDR TB treatment. So let's uh, start the treatment of MDR TB. So these the drugs that are used in this MDR TB treatment, these are classified into three groups. Group A, Group B, Group C. So why they are classified into three groups and what is the significance of these groups? Because as you go down, the effectiveness of these drugs decreases. These are most effective drugs, then uh, you can say it is three plus, then two plus, then one plus, like that. So what are the uh, drugs included in Group A? So one is Bedaquilin. Another is fluoroquinolone, in fluoroquinolone, levofloxacillin and moxifloxacillin, okay. And third is uh, betaquilin, fluoroquinolone and linezolid, yes, linezolid, I remember now. And uh, group B drugs include, what are the drugs included in B? Clofazimin, cycloserine, terizodone, okay. Uh, this cycloserine and terizodone, these have same, uh, same molecular structure, same mechanism of action. Okay, and group C drugs include pyrazinamide, ethambutol, then other drugs include py uh, pyraminosalicylic acid, ethionamide or prothionamide, okay, and uh, other drugs like imipenem silastin, imipenem silastin, meropenem. Meropenem, okay. So, these are most effective drugs, Beraquilin, Fluoroquinolone, Selenezolid, and then Clofazimine, Cycloserine, Terizodone. If these are resistance, if patient is resistance to any of these drugs, then we choose the drugs from this category. Okay. So, these are different uh, category of drugs divided into A, B, and C. And what are the two regimen for treatment of MDR TB? One is called short course regimen and another is called longer course regimen. So uh, here I'm writing shorter course regimen and longer course regimen. So why it is called shorter course regimen? Because the duration is 9 to 11 months, but here the duration is about 15 to 17 months, but if we don't exceed the duration to 20 months. So you can see the duration of treatment is approximately double in shorter versus longer course regimen. So obviously, uh, patient will choose shorter course regimen of treatment. Okay, but uh, initially, uh, when you prescribe MDR TB treatment, we uh, first of all have to exclude uh, if uh, patient has any exclusion criteria for uh, shorter course regimen. Uh, if uh, patient has any of the exclusion criteria of shorter course regimen, we, then we don't uh, give th them the shorter course regimen, we directly go for longer course regimen. So you need to know what are the exclusion criteria of shorter course regimen. Exclusion criteria. So one is children age less than 5 years. Pregnant lactating mothers. In this group of drugs, why can't we give? So, uh, uh, shorter course regimen because uh, these have certain drugs. Yeah, this regimen is fixed regimen. You cannot tweak the drugs in that. Uh, oh, this is toxic to pregnant. This is might be teratogenicity. So I remove this and put with another drug and complete uh, regimen. You can't do like that. But in longer course regimen, you can uh, tinker with that dr drugs. No, so uh, we prescribe in this category longer course regimen. We don't give shorter course regimen because this is a fixed regimen. Either you use it or don't use it. Use it or don't use it. So in this in this category of patient, you don't use it. Directly go for a longer course regimen. Okay. So pregnant lactating mother age less than five years and other is 
intolerance to drug. Obviously, if the patient has some side effect or intolerance to any of the drug components, then we don't give. Or if patient has been exposed to these drugs for one month, like uh, levofloxacin, vedaquilin, uh, clofazimine, if patient has been exposed to ethionamide, these drugs for more than one month, then we don't give shorter course regimen. We go for longer course regimen. Uh, so, uh, age, pregnant lactating of mother, intolerance to drug, and a greater than one month exposure, and resistance. Resistance to Fluoroquinolones or isoniazid. Isoniazid, there are two types of resistance. One is INHA resistance or another is CAT D resistance. So if both mutations are there, then we don't give uh, this. And in, obviously in severe pulmonary tuberculosis or extra pulmonary tuberculosis, we don't give uh, shorter course regimen. We directly go for longer course regimen. So you can write, note it down because these are important. In this group of category, you don't give uh, shorter course regimen, you directly go for longer course regimen, okay guys? So important point is. Now, uh, let's talk what are the drugs and for how long to give uh, different drugs in shorter course regimen. So I told you that it is of, uh, the duration is 9 to 11 months. So this comprised of uh, intensive phase and continuation phase, okay? Continuation phase. So intensive phase is of four to six months. And continuation phase lasts for five months, okay guys? So intensive phase comprises of beta quilin for six months. Here, why I am writing you beta quilin for six months? Because here, what I have written, four to six months. So you cannot uh, increase or decrease the dose of beta quilin to four months or six months. If this is fixed. You have to give it for six months. So don't give more than six months. Don't give less than six months. Other drugs you can give for four months, like uh, I told you, fluoroquinolones, levofloxacin, clofazimine, okay, pyrazinamide, ethyl, butyl, uh, ethionamide, prothionamide, high dose isoniazid, okay. So these drugs you can give for four months as well only uh, if a patient has a negative sputum after four months. But if it's still a sputum positive, then continue for six months. And in continuation phase, you remove beta quinine. Obviously, I told you that it's only for six months. So after six months, you remove it. And ethionamide, hydrogen, isoniazid, you remove it. You only give levofloxacin, clofazimine, uh, pyrazinamide, and ethambutol. Okay. So uh, four to five is equal to nine, and six to five, uh, if you sum up, it is equal to 11. So its total duration is nine to 11 months. Okay, so you cannot modify this, any of these drugs by yourself. Okay, this is fixed regimen. You either use it or don't use it. Don't use it, go for longer course regimen, no, no problem. But don't keep these drugs. Okay, this is fixed regimen. Now let's come to longer course regimen. Longer course regimen. So I told you that it ranges from about 15 to 17 months. Uh, you can increase the uh, duration, but don't skip more than 20 months. Okay. So. 15 to 17 months and less than 20 months. So uh, this is the duration is about uh, twice that of the shorter course regimen. And uh, how uh, do you, which drugs do you prescribe in this longer course regimen? Uh, so from group A, all drugs. What are the group A drugs? Beta quinin, levofloxacin, linezolib. From group B drugs, you include cycloserin, clofazimine. I told you that cycloserin and terizodon are the same. Mm, same like mechanism of action, so don't include both one is cycloserine or terizodone. So this is group B drugs and this is group A drugs. Okay, so total drug is here one, two, three, four, five. So total is five drugs. So in in longer course regimen, we give about four to five drugs, no less than four drugs. Okay, but five is a good number. Okay, so you can say five, number. but let's suppose a scenario a patient has resistance to beta colin, let's suppose. Let's suppose resistance to lanazolid. So here, how many drugs are there? Only three drugs. So you obviously you have to add some drugs from group C drugs, like you can add lanazolid, you can add uh, ethambutol, uh, okay? Or if you even resistance to uh, ethambutol, isoniazid, you can add ethionamide, prothionamide, okay? Paraimmunosilicinic acid, uh, imipenemcil astin, imipenemcil astin. Depending upon which is sensitive, you can uh, substitute it. But I told you that, uh, you, you, you include at least four drugs, okay? 
four drugs or good number is five drugs you, you should include but at least four drugs you can tweak these drugs based on the uh, side effect profile based on the resistance pattern so that is the benefit of longer course regimen you can tweak the but the disadvantage is that you have to give the longer time duration of time is longer about 15 to 17 months no? you say so it is a longer duration of time so can see that is the disadvantage <coughs> So you learn about what are the different uh, groups of drugs A, B, C and what are the shorter course regimen, what is longer course regimen and what are the advantages of shorter and longer course regimen, oh, it comprises of intensive phase, continuation phase, if this here there is no intensive phase or continuation phase, no terminology like that, okay, and you will learn that this is a fixed regimen in shorter course, here you can tweak the uh, based on the resistance pattern, based on the side effect profile, so you learn those things, okay? So this much about multi-drug resistance tuberculosis, okay? But in the end, I like to give you one bonus point. Uh, that is important clinically, so that's what I'm telling you. Uh, so that is about renal dose adjustment. Suppose a patient has CKD, chronic kidney disease, uh, so here you have to do renal dose adjustment. So which drug we have to need to adjust? We don't have to adjust for HR. Uh, isonazid rifampin, but we have to adjust for pyrazinamide ethambutol, okay? Because these are renally excreted. Neofloxacillin, we have to adjust it. We have to adjust for paraimmunosalicylic acid. We have to adjust for imipenem, silastin, meropenem, these drugs, okay? Uh, but isonazid rifampin, we don't need to adjust. And also, you know that we don't use moxifloxacillin UTI. Why? Because this, uh, it, it is not renally excreted. That's why we, even if, it, if you are using moxifloxacillin in MDRTV, don't uh, modify the moxifloxacillin dose. Okay, so no need to modify. But for levofloxacillin, you have to modify the dose. Okay, renal modification of the dose. Okay, so that's all for today. Thank you.